today's episode, we're visiting the Imotsuki region and a town straight out of a fairy tale, magical Imotsuki. We'll indulge in natural beauties and set off across the sea to the islands of Ij, Molat, and Dugiotok. Stay with us. of Imotsuki is a historical name for the area located in the hinterland of the Biokovo mountain. The fertile Imotsuki field plays a key role in the life of this region. Between its almost flat surface and the Biokovo mountain range, there is a vast karst area with alternating series of hills and bays. The field and the karst area in its immediate surroundings are rich in water. The Vrnika River flows along the entire field and in the northwestern part, during a cold period of the year, it becomes a floodplain called Proloshko Blato. Thanks to this, the field has excellent conditions for agriculture. In the karst area north of the field, there are a large number of karst lakes the Imotsuki region is widely known for. Not far from the Imotsuki field, on the slope of the Podi Hill, lies Imotsuki. It developed beneath a medieval fortress that was the center of the Croatian county, whose existence in the 10th century was recorded by the Byzantine emperor Constantine Porphyrogenitus. Imotsuki has all the features of a coastal town, mainly due to the climate and urban architecture of the old town. Stone houses and steep narrow streets with stone steps are a testament to the old look of this place, whose old core is protected. Several buildings with beautiful facades and fences in the style of Art Nouveau speak of stylistic trends that did not bypass this region. High above today's Imotsuki rises the Topana Fort. In the middle of the 10th century, Byzantine Emperor Constantin Porfirogenitos mentions the Imotsuki county as one of 11 Croatian counties, and already at that time, its seat was the fortress located above the cliffs of Blue Lake. During construction work on the fort in the 1980s, a stone pilaster with an early medieval interlace from the 9th or 10th century was found, which is kept today in the Imotsuki Local History Museum. The central and highest part of the fort was built during the 13th and 14th centuries, when it belonged to the noble Nelipic family, and later the Kosacha family. From that time until the 18th century, it underwent extensive remodeling. Imotsuki came under the Ottoman rule at the end of the 15th century, when the fortress became the administrative seat of Imotsuki Kadia, a judge and partly a civilian governor of the wider area. After nearly 230 years of Turkish rule, in 1717, the fortress came under Venetian rule. After several days of bombardment and the seizure of settlements below the fort, the Turks surrendered and retreated to Ljubushki and Mostar. As the city was liberated on the Day of Our Lady of the Angels on August 2nd, that day is today celebrated as the Day of the City of Imotski. Below Topana is Blue Lake, a favorite promenade throughout the year, and the main beach of Imotski during summer months. The people gave it its name after the blue color of its water. Its dimensions are 800 times 400 meters, and its depth varies. In winter and spring, it measures about 100 meters, and in the fall, it can dry out. A stone serpentine road built in 1907 leads to its clear surface. The filling process at Blue Lake is visible, especially from the north side, whereas from the south side it began to show more strongly after the 1942 earthquake. 
Back then, the lookout was demolished and large blocks of stones fell into the lake. Nearby, there is another lake with a picturesque name, Red Lake. This beautiful place filled with natural wonders is also plentiful with legends and fairy tales. For example, there is a legend on the creation of the Red Lake. Legend has it that there used to be a huge estate of the richest man in the area called Gavan, who had a wife, children and many servants. Gavan was not only known for his wealth, but also for his arrogance. He harassed all his servants and the people who would come over to him. To see this arrogance in the flesh, an angel came down to earth and disguised himself as a beggar. One evening, he asked for a favor from Gavan. His wife opened the door and instantly refused to give him any food or water. The angel asked the woman if she was afraid of God, to which she replied that she was not afraid of anyone as long as she had her Gavan in her life. At that moment, the earth darkened, thunder crashed, lightning flashed, and the whole of Gavan's estate Gavan, his wife and children, sank into the land that opened wide to swallow them. This is the site of today's Red Lake. During the storm, if there's a strong borough wind blowing through the rocks, people say they can sometimes hear the screams of Gavan and his wife from the depth of the lake. Still, Red Lake, despite the somewhat scary story of Gavan, is one of Imotsuki's finest pearls. It has a diameter of 200 meters, and the water depth reaches at some points 300 meters, where the bottom is below sea level. In the Imotsuki Vineyards area, the grapevine has been grown since ancient times. The experience in the production of grapes and wine in the Grabovats family has been carried over from generation to generation for 200 years. This is evidenced by the 1812 acknowledgement that the Grabovitz family received for their wines from the French Napoleonic authorities. Milan, I'm supposed to be able to uh, talk, but we've had uh, um, some tasting and um, I don't know how, um, how eloquent I am at the moment, so you go ahead. <laughs> usually, usually some people say that the wine unties the tongue, so mm -hmm. let's try to do that. Okay. What kind of wine is this? So this is a Cuyon mm -hmm. This is our indigenous variety mm -hmm. that is grown only in Imotsuki wine growing area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a variety, actually this one uh, dom dominantly originates from the valley, actually mm -hmm. from the southern part of the valley where we have clay soil. And in this case, it would be a light bodied, easy drinking, some kind of a summer wine, so with discreet fruity aromas, quite easy drinking and refreshing. The uh, smell is amazing. It's like a, a light summer perfume of green apple, honey, citrus. peach, citrus. Yeah, so Kuyunjusha is uh, actually the name itself originates uh, from Turkish Kuyunchu, Kuyunchu. which mm -hmm. means uh, gold craftsman actually. And practically, in context of that gold description, mm -hmm. it communicates something about the color of the berries of this variety when it's fully ripe. Mm -hmm. So it's golden. And many people believe that the name itself is some kind of a residual from the Ottoman times in our mm -hmm. area. Of course. And now on to the Red wine. Yeah, so we have Trnjak mm -hmm. over here, Trnjak Reserva, vintage 2016. So this is the variety that is grown in a quite narrow area. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually in two countries, in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, quite limited wine growing area between the cities of Imotski, Vrgorac and Ljubuški mm -hmm. in, in Herzegovina. I guess today there's not more than 100 hectares of this variety in total. Oh. And I guess there's only five or six single varietal labels that are available on the market. What a color. 
Yeah, so uh, red wines mm. in Croatia, and especially in Dalmatia, we don't call it red, but we call it black wine. And when you see a color like this, it's pretty clear why. So really dark, dark red color. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you can notice a lot of these uh, purple hues. So mm -hmm. practically, according uh, to the color, you can see that this wine definitely has some aging potential. So it can age a couple of years more six, seven years without any problem. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is a winter 2016. So on the nose, Ooh. you can feel a lot of dark berry fruits, some cherry, wow. I would say a bit of licorice, mm. and uh, intense, but quite elegant. The Kornati Cup Regatta has been running for over 30 years. Well organized and very popular, this regatta boasts competitors from all over Europe. Over 100 boats signed up for this year, each with crews of around eight. The Kornati Cup is one of the largest regattas in Croatia. Most competing boats are charter yachts. However, the crew members are lifelong sailors, and there is the same hunger to win that you would find at an official race event. The Kornati Cup Sailing Regatta was created on the Day of Our Lady in 1984, in fact, by chance, when a group of three boat sailing enthusiasts sailed from Murter towards Pischera. As early as 1984, that first regatta in Austrian-Croatian co-production brought together 27 boats and became traditional at Easter time. In 1988, there were 118 boats taking part in the Kornati Cup, making it one of the largest regattas on the eastern side of the Adriatic. Jut is one of the islands in the Kornati Island group. It is located between Pashman on one side, which is connected to the mainland by ferry through Uglian, and the island of Kornati on the other. Its surface is only 15 square kilometers, and it is only two miles wide. Its highest peak is 172 meters high. It has a steep and very indented coastline, forming the most significant bays. The whole island is pervaded with a Robinson Crusoe atmosphere. There are no permanent settlements on the island, overgrown with olive trees, figs and vines. During the year, fishermen, cattle breeders and farmers from the island of Murter only occasionally reside here. Amidst the unspoiled beauty, lies the nautical paradise, the Asia Marina Jout, with 120 berths. So this place is only available to those who come by boat for the holidays. The sea around Jout, as well as the entire beautiful Kornati archipelago, is ideal for water sports. Asia Marina Jout is located in the westernmost part of the harbour Jout Bay in the northwestern part of the Kornati archipelago. The marina has the most important facilities for a pleasant stay, reception with an exchange office and a point of sale of fashion accessories from the exclusive ACI collection, an excellent restaurant, grocery store, sanitary facilities and of course an ATM. Since we are close to the national park and the sea is spotlessly clean, the nearest fuel pump is located in the port of Zaglav on Dugi Otok, eight nautical miles away from the marina. The marina is open from April 1st to October 31st. 
Dugiotok is the seventh largest island in the Adriatic Sea. It is rich in natural beauty and in addition to the Telashtitsa Nature Park, there is also a small lake near Zman, Solinshtitsa Bay, and one of the most beautiful Adriatic bays, Sakarun. Sakarun Bay is only a few miles away from Bojava, and we recommend that you go there by small tourist train or on foot. The bay is quite shallow, and if you like to sail, you will not be able to approach the coast. Dinghy is not a solution either, as the beach is fenced off with a safety net. So the only option is to land a little further on sharp rocks, which we would not recommend. Sali is the largest place on Dugi Otok and the administrative center. Currently, there are 740 permanent residents. Many of the houses in the place are over 100 years old and the architecture of the place is almost intact. The population was mainly engaged in fishing and the first written fishery monument in Croatia dates back to the 10th century and is linked to the fishing areas around Sali. With its tourist facilities, close proximity to Telashtica Nature Park and Kornati National Park, Sally is an ideal place for relaxation. Certainly, the most famous and beautiful attraction of Dugi Otok is Telashtica Nature Park. The park is home to Mediterranean vegetation with over 400 plant species, among them numerous rare and endemic plants. The undersea world boasts some 250 plant and 300 animal species, including endangered red corals and the carnivorous sponge. Delashtica Bay is one of the safest, most beautiful and largest natural ports in the Adriatic, with six islands and cliffs, 25 bays and 69 kilometers of indented coastline. Marta, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I'm just loving this place so much. I'm completely speechless. Don't know what to say. Just loving it here. But you go ahead. Tell us something about this place. Dakle, vi ste sad u parku prirode Telašica koji je koji je osnovan 1988. godine. Nekada je spadao pod nacionalni park Kornata, ali je došlo do tog separacije parkova, tako da sad imamo u jednom malom prostoru i nacionalni park Kornati i park Prirode Telašica. Mi se sad trenutačno nalazimo na takozvanim stijenama, tako lokalci kažu za dugotočki strmac. Najveća točka u biti visina strmca je 161 metar koji se nalazi 2,5 km od nas. Tu se planira, to jest već se počinje raditi i posjetiteljski centar gdje će, koji će najviše biti edukativnog karaktera, ne sad turističkog, da ćemo graditi hotele, barovi i tako dalje, nego će najviše koristiti toj edukaciji i malo postizanje svijesti. On the Dugi Otok Island, there are former military tunnels that served as a military port and hideout for submarines made by the army while Croatia was part of what was once Yugoslavia. Today they are abandoned and very attractive to visit because they can be entered by boat. These tunnels were built after World War II and served the needs of the Yugoslav army. This 70-meter-long naval tunnel served as a military port and a hideout for submarines. There are several of them and you are free to look around. Just make sure you have a good flashlight with you and keep an eye out for holes and damage. There is a very attractive diving site near Velirat on Dugi Otok, which is the wreck of the Italian ship Michel. It was stranded in 1984 while transporting bulk cargo. The cause of the accident is not known, but it's been speculated that it was deliberately stranded in order to obtain compensation for damages.
as the ship is at a very low depth, some of its parts are still above the sea surface. Because of this, the location is ideal for diving with basic diving equipment, as it is not necessary to dive with the bottles to great depths. It is also very interesting if you want to visit it by boat. If you want to approach this site with your boat, especially a sailboat, be very careful, as it is very close to the surface and some parts come out of the sea. If you are not very careful, it can be easy for your boat to become part of this diving attraction. Ij is an island in the Zadar archipelago, located between Dugiotok and Uglian, and 14 nautical miles from Zadar. The island of Ij is a kind of kingdom, a small kingdom with only two letters in its name. Its beauty is known only to few adventurers and yachtsmen, lovers of pure, untouched nature, those who want to escape to the end of the world and enjoy solitude. There is no mass tourism here. You are actually more likely to find something already a little forgotten, which only small, hidden islands can offer you, which is total peace. And what all of us have certainly forgotten about are the people who make each place unique. Here, where you get to know all the beauty and culture in two days, the most valuable thing you will get is the hospitality of the locals. Traditional local occupations such as fishing and farming are a guarantee of good local food being offered in restaurants. Its picturesque settlements, perfectly integrated into the environment, are full of lush greenery of the Mediterranean flora of olives, pines, laurels, oranges, lemons, pomegranates, figs, carob, almonds, palm trees, agave, cacti, and a variety of fragrant and medicinal herbs such as sage, rosemary, lavender, or myrtle. That is why it is rightly called the Pearl of the Zadar Archipelago and a unique magical little emerald set in the whiteness of surfy waves, blue sky and the most beautiful sea in the world. The sea around Ij is clearer than the morning dew. Along the shore of that salubrious sea of high salinity, True relaxation during the summer heat can be found on pebbly beaches and secluded coves, in the sun or in the shade of pines, olives and palm trees. And all of this is accompanied by a lullaby of chanting crickets, a distant cry of seagulls, the quiet murmur of scented waves and mild wind. Near Ij, there is another beautiful gem just ideal for yachtsmen looking to spend time in peace and beautiful nature. The place is the island of Molat. It is separated from the nearby island of East by a 155 meter wide channel just 6 meters deep. The island is about 11 kilometers long and 4.5 kilometers wide. Molot is an island overgrown with makis and pine trees, a true destination for individuals and those who love hiking with the scent of Mediterranean plants in the air. It boasts a number of bays, canals, beaches and caves. Young forests and makis are widespread throughout the island, giving the impression of everlasting greenery. Molot is the main settlement on the island with two beautiful bays, Yaz and Lucina, which is a safe anchorage for boats. A modernly equipped harbour in a protected natural bay and a wide choice of accommodation in well-furnished apartments and rooms in family houses make Mollet an ideal destination for all lovers of the true Mediterranean atmosphere. Mollet is the most attractive place on the island and has all the necessities, like two shops, a bakery, 
a museum, various restaurants where guests can indulge in the opportunity to enjoy some original Dalmatian specialties, and of course, the beach, called Yazi, which dominates the place and is one of the most visited and beautiful beaches on the island. If you're a fan of peaceful holidays and privacy, you will love Mollet, and its excellent land connection makes it an easily accessible holiday destination for families with young children. Interesting fact, on their cruise on the Adriatic in 1936, the British King Edward VIII and his wife Wallace Simpson visited the island. We're going to spend the night in this true nautical paradise and enjoy this peaceful and picturesque place. We continue our journey through the beautiful Zadra Archipelago shortly in the next episode of Sail Ho Croatia.